Welcome back to part 10 of my series on upgrading a small lathe. Last video I mounted the lathe on its base, which you can see here, and today I want to start working on the drive between the motor and the lathe. Now I already have uh, some of the components for the drive. I have this counter shaft which I made a long time ago but needs to be modified. This will ha house the motor, the motor will come in this position here. I will use a toothed um, a tooth belt between the motor and the counter shaft. I have this poly belting here, this round belting, which uh, is suitable for uh, these two sets of V pulleys. A couple of modifications are required. Uh, I want to shorten this, it doesn't need to be as tall as this. And I probably will update the, the uh, bearing hangers. We need to make some kind of arrangement for locating the motor and providing for adjustment. I think a drawing here will help us, so we'll have a look at a drawing which I've already prepared. Here's an updated general arrangement of the lathe and the drive. You can see there in the end view the tooth belt in red, the 30 tooth and the 60 tooth pulleys on the motor and the counter shaft respectively. Also in the plan view you can see that space is very well used and everything is within the perimeter so that if I want to make a cover I can. Here you can see a close-up of the motor drive. By shortening the sidebars, it not only makes it more compact, but it makes the um, arrangement more rigid. That also means we can simplify the motor hanging bracket. It can just be supported off one side. And you can also see there the slotted holes which uh, provide adjustment for belt tension. There are a couple of things I don't really like about this as I look back on something I made many years ago. Um, the first is uh, the use of very expensive materials to make the bearing housing. So you can see here I used uh, brass. That's material I had available to me at the time, but um, it was a very extravagant use of material, I think. Uh, you can also see here that I made a little mistake in the mounting of that bearing, and uh, I soft soldered this, uh, tinned it in order to um, make up the correct clearance. Anyway, that was a bodge from many years ago. So I'm thinking of upgrading these with aluminium and I have some stock aluminium here which I hope to use. I probably will also use this opportunity to replace the bearings. Um, these are very ancient bearings and one of them is a little bit rough. So I think um, while I'm at it I may as well change those. The other thing I've already mentioned is the length. This can be made much more compact and I'm going to do that. We'll have a look at the drawings and then get to uh, shortening these and repositioning these holes. The aluminium sidebars made from a one inch aluminium angle, one eighth thick, need to be shortened and craftily I've picked up an existing hole to make the new pivot on the left hand side. So you'll see that in a minute. The three holes for the motor mounting bracket will be left till later once I have the exact centre distance of the pulleys. In order to put the radius in on the end here, I've made a little nylon plug. So that fits in the hole with a centre mark. And then we'll use that to scribe the radius on the end here. The impression I have from YouTube is that good old fashioned filing and hacksawing are going out of fashion. But these are skills which are worth hanging on to. You can often modify something or even make something far quicker than the time it takes to set up on a machine. 
Unless, of course, you have a belt sander, but uh, that can be expensive, or you've got to make one. So I brought the two aluminium side pieces, cut to length, radius at the end, over to my larger drill, uh, set it up on an angle plate, clamp them together so I can um, maintain the, the same length um, and distance between centres of the holes. Uh, I've clef carefully set this up. I've set the uh, quarter inch drill in there and picked up the centre line and uh, I'm going to go through now, open this out up to uh, 3 8 drill and that um, hopefully will complete that end of these two components. This 3 8 drill is very worn on the lands and actually is slightly binding, but it does give me a close fitting hole on the 3 8 shaft which fits in there. So because the uh, angle section has a quite a large radius in the corner, I've set up my vertical slide on the MIFID and I'm going to uh, just uh, cut that uh, corner out so we've got a nice surface for the spreader bar to uh, mate up to. Having center punched on the center line of the material, I'm now scribing a radius ready for uh, profiling. Again, not having access to a milling machine and a rotary table or a belt sander shouldn't be an obstacle to jobs like this. This was actually tackled quite quickly and the result was uh, totally acceptable. Here I'm scribing the radius for the three mounting bolts and then uh, dividing up the circumference to pick up their three centers. Here I'm using my automatic center punch with a cast iron bolster under the work to provide support, which makes quite a difference. Initially I used the center punch on the latest uh, spring tension and uh, that enables me to be very precise in picking up the center line. Accurately picking up the center punch hole and ensuring that the drill is uh, right above it uh, can be tricky but it's worth taking a little time over. I leave the clamps loose, uh, move things around until I'm confident and then tighten the clamps. As is so often the case, uh, it's necessary to make a tool. Uh, so here I'm making a small counterbore with some silver steel or drill rod in the chuck. I'm uh, cutting the outside diameter, uh, boring it, and then uh, it's going to go into the vise for filing the teeth. Well, I thought I'd just give you a closer look at the homemade counterbore. This is the spindle, which is a piece of unhardened silver steel or drill rod. The end is just very slightly tapered. You can see a step there or a shoulder and that's a burr which has been thrown up when I pushed the hardened cutter on. So here's the cutter. You saw me 
start to machine that in the lathe. Um, it has three teeth which were filed in by hand with a triangular file. And if you look very carefully on the end, you can see three lands there. And that's the original surfaced face which was left behind from machining in the lathe. It wasn't reamed, it was just drilled out very carefully. I didn't have a reamer of the right size. And then after hardening, um, I didn't temper it, it just, I just hardened it out in water after heating to a red heat and uh, just cleaned up with a little bit of wet or dry and I just touched up with this stone. This head fits on the, on the taper here and it's just a press fit and that's sufficient to drive it in the cutting process. I mean I might tap it on a little bit more than that. In fact as I used it it wedged in position threw up that, lat, that uh, small land there. But the advantage of this is that you can take that head off. I just removed it to show you here. You can take that head off and replace it with a different one, different size. And really it didn't take long to make. Well it's time to counterbore the three holes which um, hold the, the bolts which mount the motor. And that's the right diameter for mounting in the clearance holes. So we'll go ahead and uh, machine the other two counterbores. Now initially you'll find that the, this cuts well, but when it gets above the depth of the teeth, uh, it starts to clog and uh, then I just have to brush the swarf out and it will continue to cut. I've reinstated my vertical slide on the Myford and I'm just going to mill out this end slot so we don't have those uh, sharp corners. The easiest way for me to bore the hole in the motor mounting plate is to use a faceplate setup. I have a circular spacer behind the work. The three clamps are arranged to give a reasonable degree of balance. And uh, it's certainly easier to do this on the bench approximately and then uh, do the final setup on the lathe. A few judicious taps with um, a block of wood and a light hammer and it's bang on center. Setting my boring tool up on uh, center height using the gauge which I keep by the lathe. Center height is particularly important when boring small diameter holes. This is a bit slow for turning aluminium, but since the setup is a little bit fragile and I don't want the packing pieces to fly out, um, I'm taking it easy.
Just give this a quick deburr. Okay, we're nearly there now. So what we need to do now is put the 45 degree hole in there to provide access for the Allen key to the set screw in the pulley. Facing up the ends of the motor mounting plate, this could have been done by hand. I could have hacksawed it and filed it, um, but uh, it was nice to use the shaping machine. Uh, the two beveled edges there are to um, represent the extents of uh, the degree to which the plate can rotate. I'm just checking here that they're the same length and uh, finally uh, producing the second taper to match the first. After removal from the vise, it was necessary just to touch up the corners of the file to remove any burrs. So here's the motor mounting plate, almost complete. Uh, the, it will be mounted like that. Uh, this, is, this provides access for the boss on the smaller pulley. Here's the access hole for the set screw in the pulley. It's complete apart from the um, tapping these holes and, and the reason for that is I'm going to use this as a template for marking out, uh, for drilling out the holes in the frame. Let's just go over to the lathe and have a little look at the pulley which is set up ready for machining. So I've clocked up the pulley um, on the, not on the flange because that's not true and I haven't used the bore either. I've actually clocked up on the, on the pulley diameter and uh, that's nice and true. But I hit a bit of a snag because my smallest boring tool um, is just not um, adequate for this hole. It's currently a six millimeter hole and I need to open it up to eight. And I need to make a new boring tool. So I need to take time out to do that. I'm gonna make a new tool which enables me to tackle smaller holes like this. So I'll do that off camera and hopefully we can use that next video. So the motor mounting plate um, is ready for installation. One of the points that I want to get across in this, in making this, is that you don't need a milling machine to produce reasonably accurate work. As you've seen here, I laid this out by hand and uh, uh, with center popping um, and careful drilling and uh, I was able to achieve um, a good result. And uh, there, was no there was not necessary to open up the holes. Uh, it fits, it's a positive location, and uh, I think it's a satisfactory result. Um, this feature on the end here was necessary because the stock material was only two inches wide, and uh, it meant that uh, this counter bore was always going to um, break out into the outside radius, and I knew that. So that's the way I got around that problem. So there we are. The wires will go through the back there like that, and that will sit. That will sit in this position. Uh, the center bolt will provide a pivot. The other two will be radiused on the inside of the the angle there, these will be tapped and that will provide a small degree of movement there for belt adjustment. So hopefully we'll be able to look at that in the next video. Uh, fit the pulleys and um, actually get this assembly completed.